Let's tabulate everything that was discovered about chemistry into this little cheat sheet. A nice table which will give you a summary of every kind of element that you can possibly find in this universe. So as I talk, the scientists working really hard to find more elements. So what I'm going to do now is give you a nice way to earn the most coveted PhD. Discover some new elements and particles and not only a PhD, you may even get an element named after you. Did you just say discover? It is not discovery. In fact, all these elements were created long, long, long ago during the Big Bang when the explosion of stars gave rise to the puzzle pieces of the universe, the elements. These are the things that create everything, including us. It's just like these Europeans claiming that they discovered India, even though millions of us were already here living our rich heritage. Thank you very much for that clarification. As he said, it's not discovery, but scientific verification. So what I want you to do now is to wrap your head around this. And later on in this module, we will let you in on some tricks to actually get that PhD. Everything in life has an order to it. Well, most of the times, be it the way in which your mom would want the clothes in your cupboard to be arranged, or the way in which your names are arranged in the attendance register, or the way in which cars are parked in the parking lot. All these are based on some logical order or grouping, right? So if I'm talking about the way in which your names are arranged in the attendance register, it's based on alphabetical order. You'll agree with me. Similarly, elements in chemistry are arranged very neatly in an organized fashion in a very special and important table called the periodic table. Early chemists did not know as much about elements as we do now. So they did not know how to organize elements as we do now. So they were actually on the lookout from the 1800s to sensibly arrange elements based on the properties they knew uh, about them like density, atomic mass, color, hardness, conductivity. The modern periodic table, the one we have now, is classified on what they finally settled on, the magical atomic number. So what is the periodic table? It holds the concise information and is a dense catalog of all sorts of elements in this universe. As of now, it is 118 of them, and this is one of the crowning achievements of human thought. We know 118 of them, but there could be many, many more. Let's break this word up and understand this better. Periodic and table. Why periodic? These 118 elements could have been placed in one line, but they are not. They are arranged in this very special order. Why is that? Let's understand the meaning of periodic. The days of the week are periodic. That is, if today is a Monday, the eighth day from now is going to be a Monday again. Your favorite TV shows comes at the same time every day. It's periodic. Your school bell rings at the same time every day. That's repetitive or periodic. The periodic table is also repetitive in its own way. What am I trying to get at? That these elements, even though they are all different, they have brothers and sisters who have similar physical and chemical properties. And these family of elements sit together in a particular order in this table. For example, let's look at the leftmost part of the current periodic table. The current periodic table is known as the modern periodic table. Now, let's look at the leftmost part of this particular table. It's got lithium, sodium, potassium, rubidium, cesium, francium. And all of these elements are very, very reactive to water. That is, if you expose them to water, they can go boom. And they are also very good conductors of electricity. This family of elements is what we call as alkali metals. Similarly, look to the far right of the table. You have helium, neon, argon, krypton, xenon, radon. And all of these are known as noble gases. Why noble gases? Because true to their name, they are all noble. They don't react with other elements, unlike the alkali metals that we just spoke about. You have probably heard of neon and xenon lights. Neon lights are the ones that glow on the signboards and xenon lights are used in cool cars on their bumpers. Actually, don't break your head over it too much. We'll get deeper into it as the chapter progresses.